Chaff, originally called Window by the British, and R1 quarter PPEL by the Second World War era German Luftwaffe, is a radar countermeasure in which aircraft or other targets spread a cloud of small, thin pieces of aluminium, metalized glass fiber or plastic, which either appears as a cluster of primary targets on radar screens or swamps the screen with multiple returns. Modern armed forces use chaff to distract radar-guided missiles from their targets. Most military aircraft and warships have chaff dispensing systems for self-defense. An intercontinental ballistic missile may release in its mid-course phase several independent warheads as well as penetration aids such as decoy balloons and chaff. Chaff can also be used to signal distress by an aircraft when communications are not functional. This has the same effect as an SOS, and can be picked up on radar. It is done by dropping chaff every two minutes. Second World War the idea of using chaff developed independently in the United Kingdom, Germany and the United States. In 1937, British researcher Gerald Touch suggested that lengths of wire suspended from balloons or parachutes might overwhelm a radar system with false echoes and a V. Jones had suggested that pieces of metal foil falling through the air might do the same. In early 1942, a telecommunications research establishment researcher named Joan Curran investigated the idea and came up with a scheme for dumping packets of aluminium strips from aircraft to generate a cloud of false echoes. An early idea was to use sheets the size of a notebook page. These would be printed so they would also serve as propaganda leaflets. However, it was found the most effective version used strips of black paper backed with aluminium foil exactly 27 by 2 centimeters and packed into bundles each weighing one pound. The head of the TRE, A.P. Rowe, codenamed the device window. Meanwhile in Germany, similar research had led to the development of DAR 1 quarter PPEL. The German codename was that of the estate on which the first German tests with chaff had been made, circa 1942. Once the idea had been passed to the U.S., Fred Whipple developed a system for dispensing strips for the USAAF, but it is not known if this was ever used. The systems were all essentially identical in concept, small aluminium strips cut to one half of the target radar's wavelength. When hit by the radar, such lengths of metal resonate and re-radiate the signal. Opposing defenses would find it almost impossible to distinguish the aircraft from the echoes caused by chaff. Other radar-confusing techniques included mandrel, piper rack, and jostle. However, unaware of the opposing Air Force's knowledge of the chaff concept, planners felt that using it was even more dangerous than not, since, as soon as it was used, the enemy could easily duplicate it and use it against them. In particular, the British government's leading scientific advisor, Professor Line de Man, balefully pointed out that if the RAF used it against the Germans, the Luftwaffe would quickly copy it and could launch a new blitz. This caused concern in RAF Fighter Command and Anti-Aircraft Command, who managed to suppress the use of window until July 1943. At this time, it was felt the new generation of sent metric radars available to Fighter Command would deal with any Luftwaffe response to RAF Bomber Command use. Examination of the Wang one quarter LZBURG radar equipment brought back to the UK during Operation Biting and subsequent reconnaissance revealed to the British that all German radars were operating in no more than three major frequency ranges, and thus were prone to jamming. Bomber Harris, Commander-in-Chief of RAF Bomber Command, finally got approval to use window as part of Operation Gamora, the fire raids against Hamburg. The first air crew trained to use window was 76 Squadron. 24 crews were briefed on how to drop the bundles of aluminized paper strips, one every minute through the flare chute, using a stopwatch to time them. The results were spectacular. The radar-guided master searchlights wandered aimlessly across the sky. The anti-aircraft guns fired randomly or not at all and the night fighters, their radar display swamped with false echoes utterly failed to find the bomber stream. A vast area of Hamburg was devastated, resulting in more than 40,000 civilian casualties, with the loss of only 12 bombers. Squadrons quickly had special chutes fitted to their bombers to make the deployment even easier. Seeing this as a development that made it safer to go on operations, 
many crews got in as many trips as they could before the Germans found a countermeasure. Although the metal strips puzzled the German civilians at first, German scientists knew exactly what they were because they had developed Dar 1 quarter PPEL themselves but had refrained from using it for exactly the same reasons as Lindemann had pointed out to the British. Thus for over a year the curious situation arose where both sides of the conflict knew how to use chaff to jam the other side's radar, but refrained from doing so fearing that if they did so the other side would learn the trick and use it against themselves. The use of window rendered the ground controlled ML bit fighters of the Cam Huber line unable to track their targets in the night sky and left radar guided guns and spotlights useless. In response to this, a new tactic, called Wild Sow, or Wild Sow, was developed by Oberst Hajo Herriman to cope with the lack of accurate ground guidance, and led to the creation of three new fighter wings dedicated to these tactics, numbered JG 300. JG-301 and JG-302. Ground operators would radio direct single-seat fighters and night fighters to areas where the concentrations of chaff were greatest, and allow the fighters to visually acquire their targets, often against the fires and searchlights below. A few of the single-seat fighters used by these new wings had special installations of the FUG-350 Naxos radar detection gear to spot British bombers at night homing in on the British bomber's H-2S bomb aiming radar emissions. A lesser known fact is that the Luftwaffe used this technology just six weeks after the above mentioned Hamburg raid. The German strips were cut into 80 cm by 1.9 cm lengths and first dropped during a raid on 7 a Euro October 8, 1943. In a series of raids in 1943, and the mini blitz of Operation Steinbeck between February and May 1944, Dar 1 quarter PPEL allowed German bombers to once again attempt to operate over London. Although theoretically effective, the small number of bombers, notably in relation to the RAF's now large night fighter force, doomed the effort from the start. The British fighters were able to go aloft in large numbers and often found the German bombers in spite of their Dar 1 quarter PPEL. Chaff in the United States was co-invented by astronomer Fred Whipple and Navy engineer Merrindley. Whipple proposed the idea to the Air Force who he was working with at the time. However, initial tests were unsuccessful as the foil strips stuck together and fell as clumps for little or no effect. Bley solved this by designing a cassette such that the strips rubbed against it as they were expelled, gaining an electrostatic charge. Since the strips all had a similar charge they repelled each other enabling the full countermeasure effect. After the war, Bley received the Navy Distinguished Civilian Service Award for his work. Falklands War British warships in the Falklands War made heavy use of chaff. During the war, British Sea Harrier aircraft lacked their conventional chaff dispensing mechanism. Therefore Royal Navy engineers designed an impromptu delivery system of welding rods, split pins and string, which allowed six packets of chaff to be stored in the air brake well and be deployed in flight. It was often referred to as the Heath Robinson chaff modification, due to its complexity. See also, anti-aircraft, anti-ballistic missile, countermeasure, infrared countermeasures, electronic countermeasures, flare, notes. References, Gerbel, Greg. The Wizard War, WW2 and the Origins of Radar V. 2.0.2, retrieved March 18, 2008, Jones, RV Most Secret War, British Scientific Intelligence 1939 Euro 1945. Hamish Hamilton, London. ISBN 0-241-89746-7, external links, BBC, The History of Radar, Obituary of Joan Curran in The Independent, February 19, 1999 by Tam Deliel, Window, The History of Sun Engraving and Sun Printers.